and here we are and welcome to series two of Equidance Live and this time round it's not just about freestyle it's about dressage in general so welcome to your new lockdown Friday night dressage show and thank you so much for showing interest and thank you so much for coming along right first task of the evening is for you all to do something simple for me so people don't miss out if you could actually share this feed into your personal timeline or any group or in fact for those of you who now to do this activate a watch party so other equestrians can come and join in that's really cool because the more we get watching the more people are going to get out of this and that's the whole point of Equidance Live through lockdown to give you a wonderful Friday evening 7 30 every evening from now till whenever this third lockdown finishes so uh, sorry every Friday what did I say every evening Every evening. <laughs> this is Equidance. Not every evening. If you knew the amount of effort that goes into putting one of these shows together, it is not every evening. Maybe one day it will be. Who knows? But it's not. So share it. Watch party. Um, next week, we have another special guest. So before we introduce our very special guest today, I just want to say hello to who's coming on next week. And that will be um, Bobby and Paul Haler. And here they are to say hello. Hello, my name's Bobby Haler and I'm here with my dad. Paul Haler. Now, we should all be very honoured that I've managed to get dad to sit still for five minutes without running back out into the yard. So, we are very excited to be joining you next Friday. And we're excited the most, I think, about the fact that we get to learn a little bit more about you because we have all those live questions. But also, you get to know a little bit more about us. Us and Team Haler and how we work and what we do in our uh, daily, daily, daily life. Exactly. <laughs> Hopefully by next Friday, Dad will be able to say the words. But anyway, we'll work on that. But you're going to have a lovely evening tonight with Anna and Beth. And they are two lovely ladies. And we are very happy to be joining the team and joining you next Friday. Wonderful. Thank you, Bobby and Paul. We're so privileged to have these amazing people come to join us. And hopefully you're all going to get something superb out of this. Um, so I'm just going to show you the poster. Uh, this is what it is. This is the one that you want to go and click on and say that you're going to join next Friday. That's the 15th of January at 7.30. Um, so go after this show and click on that to say you're coming or show your interest. That'd be super. Um, another great bit of news is the following week, we've got one of my heroes coming on to join me uh, and that is the most incredible Steph Croxford um, and she's going to come on and share her journey and her story which is just amazing I can't wait for that too so we're getting some great people for you let's hope that continues all the way through I think we've got seven weeks to fill I don't think we're going to have a problem filling it but without further ado don't forget to share this tonight share it as a watch party make sure everyone knows about it if you enjoy it leave comments uh, and let us know what you think uh, we really really value your feedback uh, it'll always be free we're not looking for money from you so that's the way it'll stay this is a community thing to just keep you engaged and infused and happy and to cheer you up on a Friday night when we can't really do anything else so I'm going to introduce um, Elite Dressage but it's actually uh, Anna of course Anna Ross and Beth Bainbridge uh, but we're going to play a little video that we've put together just to um, introduce them and it goes a little something like this <laughs> Anna Ross, welcome to Elite Dressage. So this really is Instagram versus reality, isn't it? So on our social media at the moment, what you can see is what's finished, which is the outdoor arena, it's beautiful infinity arena and all of that. The actual truth of it is that we're halfway through. The place is a bit of a mess. It looks like a building site, but we know we have to go through that to get to our end game, which is going to be an amazing facility here. Hello, I'm Beth Bainbridge and I am Elite Dressage's head rider. I ride um, all the horses here from three years old and upwards all the way to Grand Prix. Having this covered pen exclusively for lunging gives us a really calm and relaxed environment for us to bring the young horses up in and for them to start their backing process. It also gives us more space to train the older horses in the outdoor and the indoor school. The concept of elite dressage is that we train and produce young dressage horses and prepare them for sale here in the UK. 
We train all the way through from just about three-year-olds to international Grand Prix horses. And we have about 40 horses here at a time in work. We also take in horses for training and for our training and transfer program, which is a new thing in 2020, where mares come to us, they stay in training, and the embryo work is done on them by Equus Vets, who are based just up the road. Hello, I'm Javier, I'm from Spain. I work for Equus Vets. I'm in charge of, of the sport medicine here in our practice. We are quite lucky to work here with Anna. It's a really good team and really good horses. We have another, uh, another team of reproduction vets who are in charge of the embryo transfer and all uh, the repro work here. It's really wonderful work here and see the horses develop uh, and fulfill the research potential. My name is Vicky Campbell, I work at Elite Dressage and I came over from Ireland with my horse with the hopes of doing Young Riders this year. Um, I also get to ride the young horses and help with the back process here. So first of all we have this area which is going to be the wash bit. It's going to have three stalls and each one will have hot and cold water. And then we move down here. And this part of the barn is going to have stocks in it where the embryo transfer process will take place where all the mares will be inseminated. And then this lovely area, <laughs> this will eventually be the, where the farrier works and it will be specially lit. And then we move down here. And this will be our feed first, <laughs> where we keep all our feeds and supplements, that sort of thing. So finally, at the back, we have a storage area for our hay and straw trolley. So this is where all the action is down here in our beautiful outdoor school. It's a new thing for us. It's a new facility and we're really excited about it. Um, we're very lucky that we have the indoor as well, so we can keep going all year, but this is brand new and it's just been a complete joy. Martin Collins helped us install it and we've had so much fun out here already. Hi guys, my name is Jess Rolton and I work as a rider for Anna Ross. What is really exciting is I've been here since the start of this whole project and we moved down to Devon. So I've been here to see all our amazing facilities be developed. I'm involved quite heavily in the training of the young horses and that is something that I really enjoy. Um, especially I think when we get to see them being foaled, born at Newton and also I really like looking at the two and three year olds you know when they're in their winter woolies and they're all teenager and it's exciting to to think in your mind's eye how they're going to develop and what they're going to look like. So this is a really exciting a rising three-year-old. Her mother is the double world champion Woodland of Farouche and she's by embryo transfer and her father is Val Verdi who is one of the top stallions at Helgstrand. So we're really excited to start this lovely mare this year. She's super friendly, <laughs> a bit like her friends. Um, she's super friendly as you can see and I think she's just been desperate to come in. She's been she comes up to us every time we come here and it's, it's full of fuss, so we're looking forward to bringing her down and starting up. some of our weanlings and they all live together in little groups of about 15 so that they can keep up all of the social engagements well they're not very good at social distancing as you can see this is Daphne this is Carrot just some of the team and um, yeah they're glad to be inside in the warm and living the high life aren't you girl <laughs> oh. this is Athene Lindbergh 
and she has won, I think, about nine Paralympic gold medals. So she's a very, very special mare to have here. She is currently in foal at the moment to Dunno, so we're very excited to meet that one later in the year. She's also had two embryo transfer foals, one by Feed Tans and one by Grand Galaxy Win. Um, and she also had her own foal this year, or last year now, by Dunno. Um, and they are all looking to be super prospects for the future. So yeah, we're very, very proud to have this very special mare here with us. Yeah. So this is Violet and she is carrying a very special embryo out of Habouche and by Winton. And she has got about eight weeks to go. So she's, yeah, she's growing, growing baby Winton very well in there as we can see. And yeah, so we will now start to check her. She'll be checked every day just to see if she's got any other coming up or any signs that she's gonna drop a surprise on us at any time. But yeah, she's doing very well. And we're pleased with her progress so far. Good girl. We are currently in the stocks where all the magic happens and Grandiosa is the foundation mare of the stud, the one who, so to speak, kicked it off. She is a Rubenstein, she's by Rubenstein out of a Grenadier mare and she has produced a Lysa Stallion as well as the Grand Prix host that Adam rides Newton Domino. Grandiosa is 25 and she doesn't go anywhere unless it's in Passage, up the road. Um, she had lots of falls and she loves all the babies year, all year round. She loves to say hello to them. She is such a legend. She knows she is in charge of this place. This is my gorgeous dog. Um, she's called Poppy. She stays in the car until lunchtime and then I have to drag her out. She normally growls. She's been very good for the camera today. <laughs> I have two dogs. One is uh, slightly less well known than the other. One of the reasons for that is just staring you right in the computer screen now. This is Bodge. Um, he does most things wrong. I have a love-hate relationship with Bodge. Um, although when he didn't live with us, when the place was being built a few years ago, I, I did miss him. This is a shining example of um, why we don't use him much in... Uh, and publicity shots. And there we go, that was it. <laughs> that's not actually it, of course. That's a little video that we put together at which they filmed themselves because of course I couldn't go down there We're in the lockdown and um, so they did all that filming and we edited it together back up here. So without further ado, let's introduce them. Um, I think you'll find what they're wearing quite amusing. Uh, hello Anna and Beth, how are you? Oh, you're a little bit loud and quiet. Let's just check your sound a minute. Hi, everyone. Yes, we can hear you. If everyone can hear you, that sounds about right. Oh, yes, that's good. Oh, we've had some wow emojis coming in with what you're wearing. <laughs> so, <laughs> first of all, let's um, let's share. We, we've got a mutual interest tonight in what we're drinking, don't we? Um, we've got we've got Absolutely. we've got a really fine wine. Anna, do you want to tell tell us about the wines that we've got here tonight? A bottle of Skuro, and we have been supported by them this evening, which is very, very kind of them. And um, they import lots of fabulous wine from Spain that you can't get at the supermarket, and, and we love it, as you can see. We, we will. My we... mum has already told me that I mustn't get drunk, <laughs> <laughs> and she's watching. So, um, so well, obviously, I'm being very careful. Well, my wife has told me the same thing, and she sat right there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You can do what you like. Yes. Nobody, nobody knows. Cheers. 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 So, folks, we will put a link up. I know it's a plug, but hey, it's a mate of ours. Cabala Oscuro. It's absolutely superb, and you can only buy it online, and it's, like, beautiful. Anyway, that's enough of that. Look, why are we here tonight, then? What are we doing? Well, we just felt, I think we all felt, that it was lockdown Friday, and normally we do things, and it's quite, you know, the staged is the wrong word, but we just thought, you know what? It is lockdown. This is what we've been doing on a Friday night, and um, these actually are, are what we wear at home. <laughs> In a, you know, so we thought, well, here we are. My 
big ones have got uh, unicorns on. You see a unicorn? Yes. Yeah. yes. Um, penguins. Penguins and unicorns. It couldn't be and more I perfect. I point out, just for anyone who doesn't know us really well, because we know lots of you do actually know us, Beth and I are not a couple. No. We do not. <laughs> it, it isn't a problem, okay? Because we don't care what anybody does, including ourselves. It's just that she's single. Yes. And and therefore, you oh. know, if anyone knows anyone sort of thing. We had 2,000 people interested, so there might be someone out there. There could so be. So it's worth a go, isn't it? Just a private message, just... Um, I, 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 you beat me to it. I was going to auction her off later. <laughs> oh, no, you can make me auction her. That, that's right. So the only reason we were prepared um, to be a couple to try and get a discount on our gym membership. Yes. Um, but then Beth vetoed it in case anybody <laughs> did pop up. But we don't normally sit on the same sofa. No. Like, like no. we actually have two sofas. We've got a sofa there and she sits there. And, and normally we have like a dog each. And we have a rule that whoever has the dog on them doesn't have to get up to do stuff. So, like, we'll have to put log in our fire at some point or get some more wine, but, but we have to, um, whoever hasn't got a dog on them. So, as you can see, at the moment, in our household, Beth would need to get up if something was going on because Benji's here having sleep. Right, I've, I got that. Now, listen, we showed the little video about um, Elite, which I thought was really good fun, but there was someone quite important missing out of that video, wasn't there? Can, can you tell me who was missing? The person who was missing was Alex Baker, and that is because it was Alex's birthday. Um, and actually, there are a couple of other people who work with us who weren't there that day. So as Tony said, we had great plans about Tony coming down, and of course then it was locked down, and we just had to do what we could do right there and right then on the day. So actually, Vicky Greenaway wasn't there, Amy Pullman wasn't there, and Alex wasn't there. And Alex has worked with us for five or six years now. She came in doing... I think restricted elementary. Yes, she did. Um, on on her on her horse, and she's now riding at international Grand Prix, and so she's really come up all the way through all the way through the ranks, and she's now competing internationally for Ireland on her on her lovely horse, as well as really sort of specialising and being in charge of our very youngest horses. Fabulous. There's also someone else missing tonight. I mean, on the advert, we said that it was going to be hosted by myself and Kelly. Uh, but I've got to say, ladies and gentlemen, because of um, childcare and because of lockdown, we have had an absolute nightmare. So Kelly didn't know if she was going to actually be here or putting kids to bed. So it was on hold. It was going to be the pair of us. It may well be the pair of us next week. So uh, she's actually sat here now on online interacting with you all. But it would have been us both. But I'm so sorry. It's not tough. <laughs> but we did also have some people join us, Tony, yes. who we weren't expecting in our experience, didn't we? Yeah, we, we did, didn't we? Uh, as you can see um, at my stables from that video, which obviously we had to film in the daytime, that's why it came up as a film for you all, um, we have some new facilities there, we've upgraded everything, and it turns out we've also upgraded our trolls at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> this this particular evening got trolled by a brand new set of people who were ever so well set up with paper clip and all sorts of things. So and Tony was a little bit stressed about this. I thought he was going to have to breathe into a paper bag earlier. Oh, I actually did, um, yeah. A little more relaxed about these things. We think we've gone up in the trolling world. I was like, Tony, we didn't even upgrade our trolls. This is fantastic. You know, moving, <laughs> moving on. So anyway, so Alex, so, so Kelly is here, but not here. She's like a ghost in the corner. And Alex, I think you have something We to did. We did a little video. We did a little video of Alex because she's a super little rider and she's definitely one to watch. So just have a look at this and you can see her yourself. Here we go. I'm Alex Baker, I'm a rider here at Elite Dressage. I train and compete the young horses and I ride and compete my own horse at Grand Prix for Ireland. Um, I love working here because I love um, knowing the families um, like this is Tiger and I've backed two of her older sisters. So yeah, really love the journey with it.
Beautiful, beautiful shot of the horses there as well. At the end, don't you think? We love that shot. Because, of course, up at Newton Stud, they keep the horses out, don't they, in, in, uh, in herds. And it's a wonderful thing to go and watch. I mean, I've been there myself. So tell me a little bit. I, I just want to take you back because um, I've known you guys now for a couple of years. But we go back. How, how did you end up in Devon in this beautiful location? What's the backstory? Well, the backstory is that um, Beth and I already worked together at, um, at our old yard in Chalderton. And we had a, actually really a good little business going there. We were very busy. We were on BD shows. We did lots of things. And I knew Lorna Wilson from Newton Stud, and my young horses were at Newton Stud. I had a broodmare who was sometimes at Catherston, which was just down the road, but my, um, I had several young horses there. And as Lorna's horses started getting older, the ones she bred, we started exchanging services. So Lorna's horses would come to us to be, start their ridden careers, and our young horses were all growing up there. So we sort of spent a fair amount of time up and down on the um, on the A three O three, going to see the places two hours apart, going to see our young horses, and of course I would talk to Lorna about her horses, and, and we would discuss the breeding and, and who to breed with next with my own broodmare and you know her horses, and she would say, well, how does that one ride? Do you like that stallion? And I'd say, yeah, we like that, but we think you know this could be a bit different. And so we just had this sort of evolving um, dialogue, I suppose. And then one um, winter, it was Christmas 2017, Lorna said to me, oh, why don't you come down? But that, that wasn't terribly unusual. Well, why don't you come down and blah, blah. So I said, yeah, sure, go to my car, I went down. And there she was waiting for me with a bottle of wine. And she said something which I now know really to be very careful if, if she says it again, and that is, I've had an idea. <laughs> <laughs> but these are dangerous words from Lorna. Um, I didn't at the time. And there was this guy there called Eddie, who was a partner who I'd sort of waved at before. Um, I knew that Eddie um, around the farm because it was really important to me how my young horses grew up. I did not want my foals to be little Lord, you know, Fulton Roy. I wanted my youngsters to have a life, you know, to have little friends and to go and, you know, to play in the field and have a bit of rough and tumble and grow up in herds. That was my my dream for my horses. You know, we ask so much of the horses in their sports careers. You know, we take them around the world, we put them in vans, they're in stables, they and they put so much trust in us that I really felt that the least we can do with the horses give it a childhood a sports career and a retirement, if we can. And it just fitted so well with the, with the philosophy there. Anyway, so Lorna told me she had this idea and she explained that she, her and Eddie had talked about it and they thought it would be a good idea if, if we all moved down to Devon. <laughs> so I, you know, drank some more wine, laughed away, chortle, chortle. Yeah. Anyway, when I went home in the morning, I rang Beth. This was two hours away on my hands-free car phone mum. Um, um, and she, um, and I said to both, huh, they're all mad there. They think we're going to move to Devon. <laughs> anyway, the end of this conversation, I'm driven all the way back to the yard and we were moving to Devon. And the idea then was that we would build a place at Lorna's. Yeah. And it was the more I thought about it, the more um, I realised the opportunities. You know, my initial just thought was just, no, you're mad. Why would I dump my, to be honest, quite lucrative, good, successful business, up, you know, uproot everybody and everything, risk all of that. And remember, I have a team of staff who've been with me for some time, you know, yeah. and, and, and just rip up everybody's life and disappear off down the 303 um and of course everyone's first reaction when we say where we live is like they're just like why where <laughs> <laughs> really why <laughs> you're in the middle of nowhere um so basically to move to the middle of the no nowhere to do this this crazy thing um so we did it we did <laughs> um, but actually what happened was a property came up and i had been teaching there in the winter in the previous winter before um anna had Bought, um, was thinking about buying the property and I remember her calling me and saying this place at 
Barronswood Equestrian Centre. Would it do us? I was like, yes, yes, it would. And then we no. really had a thing because I couldn't go there. Right. Because we knew that as soon as I set yes. foot in the place, we know what the grapevine is like. Yeah. The, the rumour mill would start. Mm. And of course, I had a um, the yard and the business at Chalderton. Yeah. And, you know, we were very protective of that. Until something was going to happen, we couldn't have a ru- have rumour start. So I basically started buying Baron's Wood on the same, on her <laughs> say so. Because she, yeah. she said, oh, I'll be there. It'll be all right. <laughs> it seemed to be okay. I think it would do us very well. And that was it, really. Yeah. yeah. Because it, it wasn't until we were some way down the line that I could really go and see it. So, okay, so you went down, I guess you fell in love with the place, you saw the possibility. When did the plan start for the new build and the new facilities? I mean, well, we, we already knew that we would need to expand the facilities because it's got the, the bar that we saw on the video and it's got the stables down the side. Um, so that's all good. But whoever built Barron's Wood didn't put any storage in there. So it was obvious that we were going to need a storage barn yeah. and just normal things like a horse walker. There was also an arena there that was really um, pretty unusable, an outdoor arena. Um, and so we knew we'd need to move that. So we so, so we moved it away, you, you sort of nearer the stables and yeah. further away from the other properties. And um, so, so that we, we knew we would, we would need those added facilities to go in. And then... Um, we were supported by the leader funding as well for the rural development. So that was, you know, that was really nice to get, you know, to, to be helped with that as well. Fabulous. So we're looking at, you've got, obviously, you've got your indoor smaller arena, as was with Barron's Wood, with the stables. You've got a 60 by 20 outside infinity that we saw on the video. You've got yeah. a lunch, a covered lunch pen yeah. and a walker and a new barn with all the facilities that we saw and when's your, when's your plan to having that finished? Well, uh, we actually have another barn to go in. Right. Some of the things have been held up um, with the corona. Yeah. So, so we are having to, it's a little bit slower than we wanted it to be. And that's why we thought, because this is a special evening, you know, we, <laughs> we've done this for fun. We, we don't, obviously, like everybody, we don't put it all up on social right. media. You know, that only the people who are here tonight will see that. You know, <laughs> Instagram versus reality. Um, our beautiful work in progress. Yeah, our work in progress. <laughs> Um, we're hoping it will be finished pretty soon, actually. Yeah. The, once the barn can come in, it, they go up very quickly, actually, those yeah. barns, only two or three days. The lunch pen, I can tell you the roof's going on now because I was riding horses in the outdoor as they were putting the roof on this afternoon. <laughs> um, so that was fun. Um, yeah. but on our, we, we have a rule at our stables and that we don't stop unless someone's about to lose a life. I, I think there's nothing worse than dressage horses being brought up in church, you know, as though no one can move, no one can breathe. Our horses live like horses. They go hacking, they um, go around the farm, yeah. they jump a little jump. And, and we fully expect that even the young ones will be able to handle themselves while someone's, you know, up on a teleangler putting a roof on an outdoor school and angle grinding <laughs> through the pieces. Behind the, in- yeah. Just behind us, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting. Pirouettes are going well. Just yes. <laughs> <laughs> I got some lovely passage on a horse that I didn't even know could passage. Yeah, when Eddie started drilling. <laughs> so, oh, is Eddie really involved with the with the actual construction of the buildings and everything? To be honest, it's 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 really the whole thing has been managed by by Eddie. His team is are just amazing. They what, are. what they've done, they're incredible. For those look, Eddie is is Lorna's partner up at Newton Stud. He's absolutely fabulous, absolute rock of a guy. He can literally do anything. Isn't that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and the team, Dazzler, has yes. Dazzler's been amazing. And Mike and Vassy, you know, that everybody everybody has worked really hard on this. And the thing is, we are a team very much a team there we have the boys team which is you know, the farm and, and all the, the things um we are the, the well we have the sort of girls horsey team aren't we the yeah, girls yeah. Horsey team at the yeah. office um but we all work together they're all separate companies but obviously by virtue of our location it means that we can all cooperate with each other and and for me that cooperating with, with other people is is something i'm a big fan of i i don't believe anybody did anything better on their own for me it's it's about cooperation working with other people and and it works very well we've all got our jobs as it were yes. um 
For instance, we've been fired from um, vehicle maintenance. <laughs> oh, very much so. Very much so. Yeah. We're not allowed to do that. We don't do cars or vehicles. No, or no. I'm anything. amazed we're allowed to put petrol in, to be honest, I Tony. Think, I think that's only just. <laughs> um, we've been, we've, we've been, everyone, let's just say, everyone sticks to their strengths yeah. at ours. So we mostly get told to go and run horses. But this, is, <laughs> yeah. but this is pretty much what you do, though, all day, isn't it? What's your? I mean, we've got some questions coming up from um, people who sent in videos today, actually, which is really cool. So you've got, and I know I've sent them to you, so you know what to expect. So hopefully you've kind of got some sort of answers for them. But they're for all of us, actually. But that's quite cool. Um, we'll talk a bit about freestyle in a little while, but just tell us right now about this other really exciting. Um, new development that you guys are working on with the um, uh, embryo transfer program, and, and the... uh, yeah. but that's a big part of what we do. Obviously, um, our sort of immediate job is sales um, with the sales horses. We train the horses, and they are all prepared for sale. That's the the um, you know the, the fabulous side of what we do is all the facilities and the <laughs> free horses, and that's all wonderful. But every horse we have in our stables is for sale, barring what. One or two. One, yeah, one each, really. Yeah. We, yeah. E each of us is, has one pet. That's that's the rule. Okay. Each person can have one pet. I have a very beloved horse called uh, Delgado, who I own with a very good friend of mine, Beverly Brown, and he's my pet horse. He would never be sold. So, you know, he's, he's my heart horse, and you have. I have okay. Harry, who um, I, was, I was very kindly given, who's a wonderful horse. Um, it's very special. And I don't think it'd be sold very I don't be sold any time soon. We love him. He should go Grand Prix this year, but he's he's my horse for a reason. Yeah. He made it very clear that he didn't want to be no. sold. Thankfully for Harry, he has absolutely glorious ex owners who yes. really put their own well, well you can't say profit, but their, their own thing aside. Because the horse so clearly only meant, really likes Ben. <laughs> and they, they, he, they, he meant a lot to them, so it was nice that he was given to me. And, the, and Beth has a little group called Harry's Angels. Yes, I do. Because a WhatsApp group. they're his angels. <laughs> and, and, and so it's quite sweet. Um, yeah. So that's good. And um, yeah, and then, so that, and then we do the embryo transfers, which is often from our sports mares. Yeah. Um, and, and those, we inseminate the mares at the barn, and then they are. Um, ridden up to Newton Stud 10 days later, just hacked up there, and then the embryos are flushed from them, go into the surrogate herd, go into the recipient mares, and they um, and, and then they grow up and are born and grow up at and Newton the next year. Oh, it's fabulous. And do you know what? We'll talk some more about that later. We're, apparently, we're getting a lot of questions about freestyle coming through live. Uh, on the right. Facebook at the moment. So let's do a bit of a bit of what Equidance does. Hey, a bit of freestyle. Tell us about your freestyle experience until you came and met us. Ah, now, the, the, yeah. Now, again, this is especially and only for viewers of this. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to pour a glass of this before you yeah, start. You yeah. one, team, I would top up for what you are I about like to see. I would like to point out to everyone that we are moving on yeah. from this. Oh, but, yes, yeah. So this is a little bit like a confessional, what we're about to tell you, to share with our trusted <laughs> circle of all of you. I don't know how many there are, but there's a lot of you um, out there. And um, uh, we have a lot of horses. We're just going to caveat this, right, by saying, could people, I mean, don't judge us, because we have a lot of horses. <laughs> we have to go to a lot of shows and a lot of different horses. Yes. And Beth and I might have decided at one point um, that we would just use one, one CD. Really. And I've worked for Anna for 10 years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the, and this one CD, uh, she's written from... Novice, Novice, elementary, medium. Then I thought I'd have a go and advanced medium with it. It, yeah. it does work. Yeah. And, and, and this shameful, this sh <laughs> shamefully culminated <laughs> in... Us actually having a situation where one judge saw three tests with riders from our stables back to back in one class, riding for the same music and floor plan. Um, I'm really sorry, Nikki. Sorry, Nikki. To Tessie. Yeah. yeah, we're sorry about that. Um, it's just that, you know, we felt like we couldn't really have different music for every horse. And Beth really knew that music. Uh, really well, but but the thing is, as we're about to show you, 
things are coming to an end with that CD. Yes, <laughs> so... Um, so actually, I'm going to play this for you, ladies and gentlemen, because I, I, we've put a compilation together of some of the worst bits. I'm sure there's many, many more of this particular arrangement of music and some of the things that went wrong. Here you go. <laughs> Started, Vicky. Please, can it go up a little bit? Go like this. I'm ripping out this sound system when I get the chance at the end there. So you had everything from not being able to halt because you, 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 I don't know why. And then uh, the CD was skipping and going. Yeah. We had distortion. Yeah. We had the horse spooking and jumping out of the arena. But don't worry, folks, the horse was fine. And, um, and yeah, swearing and all sorts. The horse jumped out. Yeah. It was, I mean, just to... I mean, to make it frankly worse, I mean, there's no other way to put it. That last one with the girl on, that was a um, just back four year old at its first show. <laughs> British dress up show. <laughs> <laughs> and the intrepid Vicky Campbell, um, who did a brilliant job she of did. reassuring the horse. We literally gave her the CD and went, you'll be all right, just make it up. Sorry, Tony. Sorry, sorry, Vicky's mum, Jackie. Yes. <laughs> sorry, Jackie. But that was some. Yeah. Yeah. So, so sorry. now, so now we have a mountain of musics to do for you. But things yeah. have gone a little bit better, haven't they? But they have. But I don't know, Tony. There was also another recent incident, and I I've have to it. be honest. <laughs> Kelly told me that Tony was literally hyperventilating um, through through this one, and they rang me afterwards, and they said, Anna, Anna. Don't ever do music again without us, ever. Just stop. Just stop. <laughs> this is true. Want, we did actually mean. say this, yes. And some of you will know this one because it, it was quite recent. And I was riding the, the Grand Prix from Hell um, at Kiso Equestrian Centre on a horse that's never done a Grand Prix freestyle before. And... Um, and, and Beth was also in the, in the same class, yes. and Alex was also in the same class. So I was having this beautiful moment where me and Alex and Beth all rode in the same Grand Prix and feeling all like proud and a little bit like, you know, emotional. And so I went in with a big smile on my face at Kiso, and um, we put the, you know, I put my hand up, as you do, and I've had a complete nightmare in the Grand Prix before where I, the horse is spooked at, at, at an enormous inflatable Father Christmas that was sort of bumping up and down in the gallery. And I had a bit of trouble persuading her to go up that end. So uh, anyway, so I put my hand up, nothing happened. And I thought, oh, God, you, you know, come on, go, because I've just got this horse in here, you know, on the second day. And yeah. So nothing. I put my hand up again. You make a play. Nothing. Nothing. So I decided. I was like, never mind. I'll just ride it to Beth's music. I thought, well, I'll just do that instead. That that that'll play. That's already played. So I know, but poor Tony. This is the sort of thing that's really upsets him. But so I thought, never mind. So I went trotting up to the sound man, sort of slightly forgetting I was on Click My Horse TV, and shouted, "Don't worry, I'll do it to Beth." 
get Beth Bainbridge. I'm not like Grand Prix horse. Get, get Beth Bainbridge. Her music. Anyway. Oh, running down the side of the so, school. So Beth's like, you know, the fifth emergency service, yes. running down the indoor to give them a uh, dodgy CD. Um, again, it don't, turns out, I can't really remember what music it was, but it turned out that the music I generously lent Beth was my music that I'd last written to at the European Championships in 2007. Um, and I haven't written it since then. So that's 13 years. So, but I thought, oh, well, you know, life's life. Can't always, you know, when, you know, gives you lemons and all that. Make lemonade. Um, so, shall we show them what so, happened? So I said, play that one. I'm going to play it. Let's have a look to see what happened. This is what happened. <laughs> and so there you were at, at a high profile at Key Show. It was, wasn't it? And um, and yeah, and you started singing. Tell me more. Because the thing was, was that the horse had already didn't want to know before in the day before. So I thought the last thing I want to do is stop and come back out again. You know, I, was, I thought no, I will keep going. So I kept going. Um, but the funniest thing was, was that Beth by then, that the reason the sound quality is so terrible on that is because Beth was playing it off her phone into the microphone. Oh Lisa. no. <laughs> they were really angry in the in the office because the sound system wasn't working. And as I was playing it, the guy in the corner was swearing, and I had to say that shh. Like, you were blasting this across the indoor school at Kiso. Be quiet. I'm like, this isn't like harmony, is it? As we're trotting round, right? Because <laughs> as I was trotting round, I could hear it was going, do -do 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 and this guy was going, this everything system. <laughs> it was comedy gold. But mm. epic, all this is being fixed now. So we have to stay friends with Tony yes. and do his, do his thing on the Friday night. Yeah. Well, all your music is being fixed and also. Uh, the new owner of Kiso. Hi there, if you're watching. We've been in touch to see if we can fix their sound system too, <laughs> which would be a good one, along with Sparshall and whatever else is not going right. So, yeah, sound systems, um, actually, the quality of those are, are really important. So, um, especially as freestyle gets more and more popular, which, of course, it is. It's a growing sport. We know that. Um, so, right, let's put some questions up from our audience. I'm just going to have to find them a minute. Uh, let's see who we've got first. <clears throat> um, not that one. Bear with me a sec, folks. Okay, questions for the show. I think we'll start with a question for Beth from Lynn Morgan. Okay, Beth, are you ready for this? It's about yes. balance, I believe. Hi Beth, this is my pony Rocky. Uh, he's not really wanting to look at you at the minute. He's being a bit shy. He doesn't have the best balance um, of horses or ponies and he's only 14 too and he struggles because he's built quite downhill. I've been trying to improve this by doing lots of transitions, doing a sort of collector trot down, uh, sorry, working trot, collector trot down to walk and also 
I've changed recently from a double bridle into a shocamola bridle, which has helped a lot because it's got no pressure, so it stops him from dropping at the pole, which is what he does tend to do as a bit of an evasion. He's trying to eat you now, you see. Um, I also do quite a few walk pirouettes, canter, half working pirouettes. He's working at advanced medium level, and I'm hoping to go out at advanced, but his lack of balance, natural balance, is holding us back, and I'm just wondering if there's anything that you can suggest that will make it easier for me to ride him and make his balance better. Thank you. Helen, um, I think your pony is absolutely gorgeous. Um, and with the balance, I think it's really, really good that you are riding transitions, but make sure that they are through the corner. So ride a downward transition as you're going in, whether it's from trot to walk or canter to trot or canter to walk, and then and then ride through the corner, making sure there's lots of bend around your inside leg, and then making your upward transition after the corner, because this will help him to balance for the next movement um, in, in your test. And also a really good thing, what we do is we get our poles out, and this makes your really think about the stride and the rhythm, and also helps with suppleness, which improves all the balance there you go lynn great great answer to a great question i think there let's just pick someone else as well i think uh we've got oh we've got a question about breeding should we do a question about breeding we've got a question about breeding from becky latimer here hi anna and the team at elite dressage it's becky and alfie here um i just had a couple of questions for you Firstly, how did you become so involved on the breeding side of things? And secondly, there's an old adage that fools breed horses for rich men to ride. Um, how much truth do you think there is in that saying? Thank you. There we go. Becky Latimer there asking some probing questions about breeding. Anna? I know, um, Becky, and I know that she, she has a, a keen interest in breeding. Um, how I became interested in breeding really was because... I obviously as a rider, I, there were certain bloodlines that I liked and that I didn't. Um, and it was really through talking to Lorna Wilson from Elite Stallions that, um, that, that you know, that in, during those conversations, I started to realise how there were so many commonalities between um, stallions and, and their offspring. And it's absolutely fascinating. And now we have a really interesting situation where we ride the mares that we breed from because we do the embryo transfer. And that is really um, fascinating. And the, actually the first lot of coming through as three-year-olds this year from the mares that we have ridden. Um, and then, you know, to ride them, having ridden their mothers is going to be absolutely fascinating. And we also have a... Um, a project um, that we're just starting up called Elite Embryos, where people can you, take an embryo from one of our sports mares. You can see all that on our social media. But um, our, it was it fools breed horses, was it? Fools, it? Yeah, yeah. Well, probably, probably. I used to think breeding was too high risk um, in, and that it was better to buy. Actually, I've come full circle, back round the other way now. I actually think that breeding them is, is more sensible. You have more influence in, in so many ways. In the gene pool, we know which stallions and which mares are genetically, you know, sound, for example. We can control that. Um, and also we have the opportunity to influence the, the gene pool, as you said. And, um, well, we are rich in life because we get to ride them, yes. so... <laughs> I love that. I love that. Let's get another question up. We've got a few here. Ah, I like the fact we've got these video questions. It works really well. Uh, okay, I've got an interesting one from Florence Human, who's a, a great young rider I know, actually. Let's have a look. Hi, I have two questions. So my first question is for both Anna and Tony. So I have to start competing at gold level up to medium with my youngster. And my question is, how can I make my music and my floor plan stand out amongst professional riders? And then my second question is for Anna. Um, if I was wanting to do an embryo transfer with a mare, how would I start and how would I go about doing that? Thank you. Two very good questions there. Do you mind if I answer the first one? Well, we'll, we'll critique your answer. Tony. Critique my answer. 
we'll see what we think. Oh, one of the dogs needs to go out. Sorry, excuse Beth. <laughs> Hang on, didn't Beth have a dog on her? Therefore, she shouldn't be doing anything that needs doing. No, her dog got off, so, so ah, it's something um, right. so, so that he has to attend to it. Let's address the music first of all. I think um, it's, it's interesting with any music choice, really, whether you're writing at gold or silver or bronze, you've just got to get the best music that you're going to love that suits your horse. Um, and that you can go out and be confident with. So I think from a music perspective, especially with you, Florence, you do some fantastic music. You're very good at choosing something that is different, that suits your horse, and it's a joy to put together. Uh, for anyone who's who's not so confident on their music choice, then uh, talk to other people, look at different things on YouTube, get an idea, and then really, if you're riding at gold and want to have a chance and a shot, come to a professional. Uh, and we'll, we'll chat it through with you. Floor plans, Anna. Floor plans, I think, having been in a situation where I've, I've watched a lot of classes and obviously ridden in a lot, particularly at the lower levels, people tend to do an awful lot of the same thing. So what I would say is if you can, one really good way to make an impact, no, two really good ways to make an impact. The first thing is don't start by coming straight down the centre line from X. There's a million other ways. Well, maybe not a million. Okay, it's been, it's been exaggeration, but but you could, for example, veer off to the right. You could do a half circle round. You could do a medium trot on a diagonal. There's numerous ways to to start off your music program. And the other thing is, don't go trot, walk, canter. Now, sometimes you need to start in trot because um, if your horses are a bit fresh or they're they're young, you might need to do a bit of trotting to calm them down. If your horse is a little bit more experienced, starting in canter is a really good idea because the judge doesn't expect it. Most programs go trot, walk, canter, trot at the lower levels. Um, and, and, you know, I think it's a bit wearing for the judges, to be honest. I mean, obviously not as wearing as them having to watch us do the same uh, music and floor plans. <laughs> best part of 20 years. Um, just as an aside, my old rider who used to ride for me 20 years ago, has message to say she used to ride to that CD. <laughs> um, but, but you, you know, I, I think you've got to try and switch it up a bit, do something innovative that the, ju that, that the judge hasn't just seen for the last 10 competitors. Fantastic. Good answer. I hope that helps you out there, Florence, and I hope you're keeping well in lockdown. Let's pick another question here. Um, we're going to go for... Uh, Mel Best here. Advice. Hi, Mel from Hampshire. What would be the best advice anyone's giving you in your horse career? So that's the best advice anyone's given you in your horse career. What would that be, Anna? Absolutely, unquestionably, never get back on for the third time. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That's fantastic. I've been married twice. Don't go back for more. That's a really good answer, especially now in our COVID times when we really don't want to be coming off horses, do we? No, 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 no. no we lunge. We lunge in we COVID. We lunge in COVID. Lots of, lots, of, lots of lunge. Okay, I've got another question coming up, and this will be Sam Brown about some compulsory movements. Here we go. Hi, so my question is from a judge's point of view. Um, in my advanced medium freestyle floor plan, I've got a bit of Ron Vez and Travers in. Um, some judges really like it and give me a nine, and some judges really hate it and give me a five. Um, I put it in just as it makes my floor plan flow and choreography, a bit more inventiveness. Um, so from a judge's point of view, do you think non-compulsory movements are a waste of time? Or should you continue to put in the non-compulsory movements just to be a bit different and show your inventiveness for your floor plan? So my floor plan, my PSG floor plan, um, I'm going to re-jig it. So should I add some non-compulsory movements? Although with PSG actually, I don't know if I will have time to put any non-compulsory ones in. Or if I do, what do you think? judges would like to see with a non-compulsory does it add a bit more flair that's my question there we go fantastic question there from sam brown non-compulsory movements especially at advanced media or psg does it make a difference is it necessary contentious issue contentious you, issue 
huge for a Friday night. So our question to Sam would have to be this. So it's a good thing she's not here and she can't reply. <laughs> How good are you at wrong there, Sam? Because if you can show that baby off like a boss, it might go down well. The only thing, and this is my opinion, Beth is an actual judge, okay? I am not an actual judge, okay? Ron there is not in any dressage tests. No. Ron there is a very useful exercise when ridden well. It's something we use a lot, but it can look like someone is doing shouldering incorrectly if they're <laughs> not doing it correctly, brilliantly. And I suspect that is where Sam's four has come in. Because either, now we can look at this two ways and we know we've got judges watching. So there's two possibilities here. Either Sam has performed a wrong bet so brilliantly and the judge has, has thought, gosh, that's imaginative and given her a nine, which is what it sounds like has happened once. Or someone's looked at Sam and thought, that girl doesn't know the right bend for her shoulder <laughs> anymore. <laughs> there's a four. Okay. Personally, I think it's true. I, I would not do that because I think, Sam, we don't know each other, so don't judge me. This is just a Friday night. I've got a glass of wine. I think there's a possibility the judge might think you're being a bit of a clever dick. And therefore, it might... I, I would... Personally, I would leave Roma out of it. The try there, yeah, but Beth's an actual judge, so I should be quite... Confused. What do you think, Beth? I, I personally think it's a step too far. Um, but because it's not in a straight, any 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 straight test that has lateral work in it, so I would I would Sam I would just tip, stick to the shoulder in and the travel to be honest. But you can you can change it up so you could do it on the three quarter line, you could do it on the centre line. Make your degree of difficulty more that that way and and make. And make your test different that way rather than doing wrong there. That's what I so think. it's a bit like when I have a novice rider come to me and I'm at a clinic and they um, they do a rain back in walk. <laughs> and I'm like, um, okay, right, so rain back, that's lovely. You've done a beautifully balanced five step rain back. It's wonderful. However, with music, we don't have many options for your <laughs> rain back. Um, mind. <laughs> well, we've done that. I don't know if you saw on social media, we put it up and we literally, the music is like a DJ. I went, do stop the music. And, went, yip, 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 yip. and then it went back again. And that was a gimmick. And I only want to use it once. So please do not put rain back in your freestyle. <laughs> also, the thing is, is there is this, this fine line, isn't there? Between balance of risk. Yeah. And, um, uh, uh, and you know, your choreography mark. So losing the fluency. If, yeah, sense. losing the fluency. If you can do it really well, and to, if you can take high risk and pull it off, and the degree of difficulty mark only comes in at medium. Yes, absolutely. So there's no degree of difficulty mark up to medium level. So I would say it's more important to give your horse like a nice ride and show fluency and have great music and, you know, not have the CD skipping and the horse jump out of the arena. Um, that sort of thing. That would be more important than, than trying to, to really overcomplicate it. I mean, if you look, for example, at Anki Van Grunsvens, who was a double Olympic gold medalist, um, if you look at her music floor plan, it's actually very simple, but the music was very, you know, it was very well executed. Um, you know, so sometimes that can really work. It's also good to be innovative. Alex does a little thing in hers where she goes from a piaf pirouette into a counter pirouette. And she can pull it off every time. So her degree of difficulty mark goes right up. But, you know, we had to be blooming sure it was going to yes. work. Um, otherwise, if you're in, you know, Tranter, stuck at X, boiling up and down on the spot, it, you know, it doesn't really matter how brilliant Tony's made your music. <laughs> it's only so long you can convince the judge that it's meant to be happening for. Yeah, I don't think I've seen many more degree of difficulty uh, executions than the... Um... The, 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 the passage, well, the piaf uh, pirouette into the counter pirouette. And when I was filming it, I think you were standing by me at the time, and I was like, has she gone wrong? 
Because <laughs> when she first went into the canter, I thought it was just doing starting the wall of death. I was like, what's, what's happened? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I've never seen Perfect. that before. Horse <laughs> <is> now functioning. <laughs> <laughs> Good job I'm not a judge, isn't it, really? Hey, uh, I think so. Anyway, well, let's, let's bring up another question. That's really good answers to another really good question. We have got some more, but not too many more. Uh, we've got one from... We've got one from Sarah Bird about BPM. I'm going to open that one and answer it with you guys. Here we go. Hi, my name's Sarah. My question is about beats per minute. I have a piece of music from my old horse, which was worked out especially for him. And I would like to use it for my young horse um, whilst we're in lockdown, just to submit for some online competitions. Is it going to matter massively that the beats per minute don't match his striding? Thank you. That's a really interesting question. Do you mind if I, I answer this and kick it off to begin with? Oh, yeah. We've used the same CD for 20 years. This is why, this is why they're not going to answer this question. <laughs> so um, if you are doing something in lockdown and, and don't have an arena to uh, go out and, and try a new floor plan with, or if it's just an unaffiliated competition online, and we really, really recommend doing some unaffiliated online dressage while you can't go out and do anything else. Keep yourself involved, keep yourself engaged. It's fantastic. Uh, if you've got music that you think you can fit a floor plan to at another level with a different horse, then give it a go, absolutely. It's not gonna fit perfectly. And if you were saying to me, uh, oh, well, I've got a younger horse with different paces and we're going to regionals, no. No, 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 the bar is too high. Uh, get yourself something arranged perfectly for that horse and then go out and ride those markers and everything absolutely perfectly. But if it's for something online for now to keep you going, go for it, go for it, give it a go, as long as it fits. You'll know if it's not fitting when you ride it and if it's not fitting, don't submit it, give us a ring. Is that fair enough? Yeah, I think it's easiest to tell. I mean, to be honest, Tony, you're obviously very musical, which is, Great. Um, others struggle more um, with this. The, the easiest thing to tell is the trot music, because if you're right, if you're doing a rising trot, basically you'll pretty much go up and down on the beat, won't you? And even people who are utterly tone deaf, such as my good self, can usually manage to work that bit out. I mean, I think there's two lots of people who ride freestyle, aren't there? There are people who ride freestyle who feel the music, who breathe the music and all the rest of it. Then there are other people um, who do it like, like you're very good at that. You kind of know what's going on yes. and you can make it up. I write it like a, like a robot, okay? I have to know all the things and I have to know the music and then I just write from the, the thing to the thing. And I, I think I, I'm very much somebody who lets everyone do their job. So I think, well, Tony's good at music. I'll ride the horse. We'll make it work like, like that. Um, but I think, you know, right, I think what is really important is knowing your music. Because oh, 100%, if, yeah. Yeah. If you are, for example, on an, in an arena with a, with a fence around it, the horse will naturally gravitate a little bit in. Yeah. So often, if you are in an in a arena, for example, the International Arena at Wellington riding, they used to do a gala evening there. And there was a crowd all the way around the edge. And of course, because the crowd were right up against the fence line... And the horses came in and everyone would be ahead of their music. And then you have that sort of cringe moment at the end where you know that you've got a bit too much music and you're riding down the centre line, you don't know whether to circle or not. And then you um, end up standing there, you know, at the end, because with literally your horse's nose, like, <laughs> on the judge's window. And you're like... It's like you're biting the windscreen wipers. <laughs> and you're like... Oh. You know, maybe, and that, that would be a top tip, actually, would be don't make your music program finish at the end of the arena. Definitely because not. if you get pulled out, you have screwed, you know, you will be in a, so much trouble because you will be standing on top of that judge. I would always aim to finish it not before um, X, sorry, not after X, yeah. because then you always do something with it because it is reasonably embarrassing. And in a, in a novice, in an elementary um, Floor plan. You can always walk up the centre line at the end. Yeah. If you are, if you're, if you're a little bit ahead of your music, just just bring them back down to walk at X and then walk up the centre line. Uh, and it, it it looks like that's what you plan to do anyway. And it goes well. Yeah, we I think Grand Prix. I think you won steps at PF once, Tony, <laughs> in a Grand Prix when I was ahead of my music. <laughs> I'm just 
cheap, oh, darling. You, you have the luxury at Grand Prix of being able to Piaf and Passage. So everyone ends on Piaf and Passage. And it's like, well, do you know what? My Piaf and Passage music came in a bit early or late. It doesn't matter. Because I'll just do less or more and just hang yeah. around hang around a bit around X. Do a bit of a do a bit of a fan and then pass us down and go, I totally planned that. <laughs> yeah, but we say the same, you know, with ending with ending a freestyle, um, leave yourself enough. Too many people end their freestyle on fifteen seconds of trot. And it's like, okay, you've done your walk, you know, as you were saying, with the, with the, with the trot, walk, canter. You can mix it up. Don't mix it up too much because you don't want to change the music about too much. But if you are ending in canter, you can end on just a few strides of trot before you halt at lower levels. So we don't need to change the music at the end. And let's just have that... <laughs> it's just like, wow. I totally agree, Tony. And in our terrible music CD, one of my pet hates about it, right, is the ending. Because the ending goes on forever. And my washing machine, right, seems... <laughs> Where's this coming but from? Hey, and I cannot tell you how much I hate, don't I? I <laughs> oh, my God. Every time my washing machine finishes its cycle, please, if any of you out there, I appeal to you all, knows how to switch the bloody thing off. I tell you, there would be less tension in this household. You've just got to ignore and it. The, <laughs> and the end of our washing machine cycle, the song it sings... How did we get here? exactly the same, I swear to God, as her, the end of her... Bloody music CD, it's the most terrible thing. It goes, do, 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 boom, boom, boom. And it's just, oh, it sets my feelings rattle when I hear it. And, and the, yeah, the, my washing machine has the same effect. So, just as an aside, anyone out there knows how to turn that. So, you heard it here first laundry to freestyle. Yeah. Well yeah, done. Laundry. So we find yeah, another... Down, Tony. It's we're... not like we're doing a lot else, is it? Let's we're we're going to find another question Hang quickly. On. I'll give five quid to charity if Anna can trot to the washing machine music. Yeah, well, five quid to charity. <laughs> if you can trot. So you're, you're going to have... Now, Beth, you have to record it now on the phone, send it to me, and we'll just loop it continuously. <laughs> yes, that'll be hilarious. God, I tell you. And now, just one thing I would like to point out. Now we're into the evening, and I'm sure we're all friends now. <laughs> Is that Tony and Kelly, um, talking of recordings, I understand that for our little outtake CD, Tony spent some time looking up one particular sound, didn't you, Tony? Would you like to share with us what <laughs> oh, you Oh, <wanted>? no. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I did. So there was a point, uh, there was that with Bodge, who, Bodge and I have a love-hate relationship too, because I never know if he's going to bite my hand off when I see him. <laughs> but anyway, so you were talking about Bodge, and then he's saying, you know, this is why we don't feature him. And then he went and cocked his leg on the corner of the brand new arena. And I had to, I had to annotate that with something. So I searched for... <laughs> I, I searched for wee noises on YouTube <laughs> and I actually the sample that was used was um, a woman peeing in ceramic bowl <laughs> and my, now my, in, my internet history my browsing history is now under scrutiny by my wife obviously who sat here <laughs> laughing at me but yes we did no, no enough of that we're going to another question I'm going to go to Vicky Taylor and she's going to ask about starting off medium trot hi Anna how can I achieve a really good medium trot? Thank you. Lovely filter and everything there. That's Vicky Taylor. How can I achieve a really good medium trot? Well done, Vicky Taylor, for raising the tone. That's first and foremost. Absolutely. We needed a saviour somewhere, and Vicky did it with her filter and everything. <laughs> um, would you like to? Yeah. Yeah, I can do that. Oh, he can't stop, stop it. it. We're live on Facebook. Nice. Um, <laughs> um, to improve your medium trot, you need gears to your trot, and to create gears, you need to ride loads of transitions, um, and on and back in trot, and trot walk trot, trot halt trot, so you start to get your second, third, fourth gear, so that you can start moving them around the skull, and then they get more and more, the horses get more and more confident to take a bigger stride. <laughs> but also, you have to, oh, it's over there. Okay, sorry, keep going. Um, you have to, and then your, 
you have to use the more connected trip to put more onto the hind leg <laughs> so that then they can push and develop a bigger stride in the trot. Um, you can also use shoulder in. I think I've hidden it. Oh, oh it's down yeah, there. It's down there. Yeah. <laughs> in the wine. Um, you can also use um, leg yielding into medium trot and shoulder in. That, so you ride down the long side and do shoulder in from the corner to E or B and then and then straighten them out and then ride medium trot down the second half of the thank you. The second half of the long stride and this helps to engage the hind legs so they can push more and and take a longer stride. Can That's, I butt in? Yeah. Yes. Sorry, I feel like I'm butting. But can I just say this is a pet hate of mine. I know it feels like Maybe I haven't been out enough recently. Well, I haven't been out enough recently because I feel a little bit like this is like therapy and I'm kind of opening myself up to the group. But please, all of you, don't do this, right? You know that thing where people go on the diagonal and they just like run a little bit forward half-heartedly? It absolutely boils me inside when I see people doing that, doesn't it? It drives me. It's my pet pay. <gasps> Never, ever... Go on the diagonal and do that little bit running forward thing. You would be better to go onto the diagonal and make a transition back to walk and put your horse on his hind legs than you would to do this sort of amateur limp across the arena. Either do it or don't do it. <laughs> Kelly, stop it. Don't look at Kelly, stop it. I'm um, just kicking it harder. Oh, the other thing that is a really good thing to do is collect your horse until X, okay? And then really ride forward to the corner. And another thing, remember the mark, the mark is given to you at the end, not the move, not the mark, the, the beginning. So don't go flying off on, you know, like someone's just pressed turbo, like, you know, Eddie the Eagle, <laughs> yeah, on, for the first three strides and then come limping in at the end. You're better to do your best strides at the very end. And if you make your, if you teach your horse to make the transition from X, he'll sit back and be ready to go again. So then, Vicky, you've got loads of things to practice, but don't overdo it because um, it's been proved lots of times that the thing that's actually most stressful on the horse, on his joints um, uh, and the, the suspensory apparatus and things, is actually the trot extensions more than the fiap and the passage and the pirouettes and everything. So, so little by little. That's really interesting. And also, of course, um, at Novice and Elementary, you don't need to show more than a few strides. It's not an entire line of medium and it's not extended. It's just medium and you yeah. don't have to show that much. You just have to show that it's working towards it. Yeah. And some horses are, it, it's really a weird thing. It, it's, some horses are really born with it. You know, we see it in the folds. They just fly off across the pen, you know, with the knees up around their ears. The flicky, and yeah. they're born with that. It's inherent in them. It doesn't actually necessarily mean that that horse is going to be great at the very higher levels later. Some of them move almost a little bit too big and they find it difficult to close. It's something everyone loves it, don't they? We all love to see the horses flying off in those extended paces. But, um, you know, the, basically your horse can only extend as much as he can collect. I'm just wondering if anyone can take me seriously dressed in a unicorn hoodie. That's, that's a very interesting comment, though. You can only extend as much as you can collect. So if you... Basically, you, you, if, you, if your horse is not born doing it, and you're sort of, you know, going in collecting rings, envying those around you who are sort of zooming past, um, just remember that your horse needs to be in his own balance. And then in the end, the more collection he can develop, the more they're able to do it. So it's not something we actually ask horses at all. Um, Beth has qualified horses in the past and the judge has told us she's missed it out in a yes. test and she's helpfully said, well, it's because I'm not allowed to do it. <laughs> 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 I, I finished my test and I, I, the judge was in the, um, in, in the where you get your scores at the end. She said, Beth, you wrote a lovely test but you ride a lot of half passes. And I said, I, I know. I said, but I'm only, I'm only allowed to do one extension when Anna is not there. <laughs> 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 I am really obsessed with longevity. You know, I, I'm, my goal with the horses is always to produce 
produce a, a young horse, um, um, a, a Grand Prix horse, not a young horse yeah. champion. I, I'm not interested in that. If they do that along the way, that that's lovely. But you know what I said about a childhood and a sports career, I really mean. And to me, a sports career is a higher level dressage horse. And I think they only have so many extensions in them. And, you know, I'm not interested in running them ragged at a young age, trying to, you know, show off to my mates, <laughs> you know, don't care. So so with our young horses, they are, um, yeah, poor, poor Beth, who is in charge of training many, many of these horses to, to a high level. You don't get to flash, you know, there's no fun, no, is it? No, no, no. And I think when she warmed up with Cole Fielder, when she was doing the, well, I wasn't there. No, she was doing the uh, trial for the, for the world, world championships. Yeah. yeah, and then and then I did see a bit of leg flicking on on the video afterwards. I think they had a bit of fun when I wasn't around. To but I don't. Fun. But I don't do it at home. No. So I really make a point of only practicing that just before the show and and at the show. Yes. Wow, how um, interesting. I, I wouldn't we have thought that. Oh, that's um, super, super interesting. I'm going to find another question. Um, we've got Yasmin Ulla, and this is a question about horse size. Here we go. Hi, Anna. Thanks for taking my question. So I'm five foot two, and my current unicorn is 14 hands three, and we communicate really well together. What I wanted to know from you is what are your thoughts and experiences of small people on bigger unicorns, as that's what I'm considering for the future. Thanks very much. So 5'2", doing well on a, on a smaller horse. Would you recommend something a little bit bigger or, or should you stick with something smaller? I think it is more about, I think the first thing is, everyone looks best on the horse that they have the best relationship with and they ride the best. That's the first thing. I don't think it is, like, you know, to, to people who always used to say, oh, to ride dressage, you've got to have a big, impressive horse and blah, blah. I think actually what impresses the judges the most is good riding in a harmonious way and a partnership. So I wouldn't really advise that somebody goes and really overhorses themselves because they feel that it's going to earn them, earn them, earn them, earn them more. Having said that, if you are very petite, I actually think the build of the horse is more important than, than its height. Because, for example, I have really long legs. I'm, I'm built sort of a bit like an ape. I've got really long arms and really long legs. But not such a, not such a, a long body. Uh, but I can ride a small horse if it has a barrel. But I cannot ride one that's shaped like a show pony because my leg hangs, you know, too low and it's sort of in its elbow. So it's more about the type, I would say. So if Yasmin wants to go for a bit, taller horse i think that's fine just get one that's a little bit like slim built yeah, you know sure. or, or you know yeah. that, that the legs come down on because what you don't want to do is having the judge see you know the bottom of your riding boots and you know because your feet are sticking out like you're on a fell well because your leg isn't long enough to wrap around but a tall slim horse you know with a slim build that could you know that that could work really well i mean it's got to be what you're comfortable with like for example, I'm tall in, you know, quite tall. I'm five foot eight, five foot nine, and I like my horse to have quite a big front. A smaller person is able, I think, to coordinate well with a horse that has less, less space in the front. With you know, whereas I need to balance the picture, I need a horse with quite a big, you know, big neck. It's also something to hang on to if it's trying to fuck me off. <laughs> That's a really good answer. I hope you enjoyed that one there. Yasmin, and we've got one more question as well about horses. And this is from Zara Griffiths, and she's asking about balance in changes. Here we go. Hi, everyone. I am Zara Griffiths from Fairfield Dressage Academy. And my question to you, Anna and Beth, is when my horse, Leggy, does tempi changes, he is wobbly like a wobbly, wobbly worm. He does them on cue every time, but he is so wobbly. How can I keep him straighter? I hope you are all coping well in lockdown. I know I am. <laughs> ah, there we go. This is the lovely Zara Griffiths. Uh, with her big horse, Leggy. So have you got some advice for Zara? Well, I think Zara actually is a quite a good example of what we're talking about, isn't it? Isn't it? She's actually not a very um, tall person who rides a very tall horse. So, so that's one example. Um, I think the first thing that you have to consider, if your horse is really crooked and it's, 
it, and it's right to say this because it's correct protocol, and I should say it, is if your horse is really crooked, it, it, it's a good idea just to be 100% sure that that horse hasn't got any issues um, yeah. before you actually set about, you know, tr you know, going on with the training. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm well aware that Sarah takes fantastic care of her horse, so it's, it, but it's something that we should always bear in mind, you know, that if the horse really seems to be favouring one one side of the body over the other, that can be a heads up of a niggle in that horse that, you know, her horse is perfectly sound and he, he's doing well in his shows, but actually that to us always just makes us, the bleed go a off bit. a little bit. So number one, check it out because that's the right thing to do because we love our horses. My second bit of advice, and I'm sure you've got loads for this, is, um, is, is actually when horses are strengthening and developing, a little bit like us as well, they're a bit right-sided or left-sided. Um, Shouldering is the most useful thing you can do. So my exercise would be for um, Zara to ride her flying change. So if she rode the flying change to the right, she would then ride shoulder into the right until she made the flying change to the left. Then she rides shoulder into the left, and that stabilizes the balance and, and so on. But Beth spends a lot of her time training <laughs> the horses sort of between elementary and pre-St. George, don't you, yes. a lot. Yeah, that's got, most of my day. Yeah, right? you've got sort of three trainings of Water Grand Prix at the moment, yes. haven't you? But then a lot of your day is spent with those wobbly wonders, isn't it? <laughs> so how do you do it? Um, firstly, think about the speed of your canter. So you have to make sure that you, you're, you ride the canter so it's in balance. Um, and if you haven't got that balance, then your change isn't going to come off. So, so don't kind of keep going round thinking, I must do these changes, I must do these changes. Bring it back and think about the quality of the canter and, and what you've got before you ride that blind change. So are, is this horse in front of your leg? Um, are they, when you look in the mirror before, if, or if some, get someone to help you, is your horse straight on the diagonal line? So um, are, are his quarters straight? Is his nose in the middle of, not obviously on his chest, but if you no, were to, no, 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 cut, no, cut, no, cut. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't, don't, sorry, carry on. Sorry, Beth. When you look at them, when you either can look at them in the mirror or someone is, is looking at them, is their nose sat like in the middle of, in, of their chest in an open frame? Okay. Um, and so that's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just, I just, I just look, look perfectly at yeah, yeah. So really make sure that you have all those things before you do it do a flying change. The other thing is well, is to bring it back and make sure they are really um, um, off your leg in the canter, um, in the trot to canter transitions. Because if they are a little bit slow off of that age, it's not going to be any different when you put your leg on to do that flying change. So really make sure they are off your leg in the trot to canter and the walk and the simple changes as well. And then and then go from there. You can either do the changes on the long side or what you can do is get some poles out, like a golden day. She spends um, a lot of time doing this. <laughs> what you can do is put poles on the diagonal. You have to make like a little like playpen, like a crisscross, because otherwise you've only got one diagonal. And then and then do them in in the poles. And that that's a, you can you can give them quite a wide space and then kind of like get it smaller and smaller. But that's a really good way of making your horse straight. But the canter come like is first every time. I can say, if anybody wants to know what she is on about, we, we can do your little yes. diagram and Tony can put it up yeah. <laughs> um, with the pole exercise because it's really, really good. But what Beth is saying about the horse being on the aids is so important. And actually today we had a conversation that totally illustrated that. We've had a horse come in because he's a little bit iffy in his changes. And um, I was teaching a lesson that, and I came into the arena and, I said to Beppa, what's he, you know, what's he like? And she said, oh, well, I can tell you in trot why he can't do his changes. I mean, it's, uh. you know, it's really often that basic thing. Now, Zara's got her changes. It's about 
getting that straightness. But I can also say that 99.999% of problems in flying changes are straightness issues. So if you're working on your own, which we know a lot of people are, well, a real lot yeah. of people are in lockdown, if you're not able to do video training or or have your instructor come, the pole thing is brilliant. Mm -hmm. And if your flying changes are going wrong, probably 99 times out of 100, it's because your horse isn't straight. Mm -hmm. So that's a real good thing. If you're in lockdown and your flying changes aren't going right, you cannot, you will not go wrong by working on your straightness. So, so give that a go. And if it's really, if it's not working out, that, drop us a message and send us yeah, a video. We're, we're all in it together. Yeah. You know, if this is not easy. It's true. We're, yeah. we're, not, we're here to help. We yeah. know how it is. Yeah. And it's just so important that we, you know, we stay apart, we're which is together. hard. Yeah. And, and we know it's hard. It's, yeah. Training on your own is hard. Yes. So, yeah, we, we, don't, we don't mind. No, you can all jump come and a bit, yeah. hold that horse at a yeah. show or something. Just send us a video. Yeah. If you're They're going to regret that statement soon, I'm sure. We've got, <laughs> we got, we got a lot of people watching right here. <laughs> hey, listen. Yeah, we could reply in emojis, you know, just to make it quicker. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Aubergine. <laughs> and cross faster. <laughs> race horse. The snail slower. So um, at this point in the evening, I think you were going to ask us a few questions about Equidance. Um, we've got a couple yeah. of questions later on as well. But um, I think, can, can we play our little Equidance intro? Of course. And we've got, and we'll get our questions up. We... Okay, okay. So what we're going to do, folks, is we're going to play a little intro so you can all see a little bit more about, I mean, we know all about Elite Jessels. We know all about Anna and we know all about... <laughs> Right, Beth. They're getting hot now. Look at this, it's great. But your air, condi air conditioning on, is it in January? No, oh, I might have to go down to my next layer. We wanted to keep our, our dignity. We're trying to keep our dignity in case we leant forward because my mum and Beth's grandma is both watching. watching. So, so we double layered. <laughs> Okay, let's not turn tonight into a strip tease. What I'm going to do is no, no, you can readjust no, no. your dress code and I'm going to play a little introduce to, uh, an introduction to Equidance uh, to show me and Kelly and what we do. And here it is. <laughs> And I'm Mrs. Equidance. This is Matilda. Um, we'd love to show you around our yard up here on the Mendip. So uh, come have a look. This is the lovely Dandy. He's just 10. He's a PRE cross Irish sport horse. And he belongs to one of our family's best friends. Um, he's been trusted to me for two years. And he's competing at medium now. Um, he doesn't find any aspect of work easy because he's just not built for it, but he just has the best heart. He is amazing. And no, it's not a toy horse for you, that's a real one. And this is my three-year-old Avalon. We bred her. She's out with my grey mare special who lives down at Newton Stud on their embryo transfer program. Um, she is broken to ride. She's working really sweetly, but she's on a bit of a sabbatical now so she can have the winter off. We're really excited about her because she moves nicely and just again has the best attitude. We may not have the, the award-winning facilities here, yeah. but they just yeah. have so much turnout and so much time to just be horses. It's fantastic. Hi, 
this is our arena. It's 25 meters by 45. So we can't practice a, a full length test in here, but we can do pretty much everything that we need to. At the moment we're doing pole work. So the arena needs grading. It will be done later on, but it's sand and fiber. It never freezes. It never floods. It's a really fantastic footing. And just look at that view. There we go, that's a little bit about us at Equidance. You saw, you even saw our house and where we keep our yard. So that's a bit of us. That's a bit of us laid bare, like these guys wearing their pajamas at home. And you've got some questions for me, have you? We have, we have. Um, okay, so what would be your ideal horsey dinner party when we're allowed to have dinner parties again? My ideal horsey dinner party? Ah. Who would you invite? Oh, that's a really tough question. What do you mean, horses or humans? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Um, six people. Six. six. Oh, my God, they've asked me six people I'd invite to a horsey. Well, totally. Okay, so we'd have, we'd have JLC, the mothership, of course, uh, at the head of the table to, to mediate. Um, yes, of Anyone? course. Of course you two would come. Yes, uh, of course. Why? The, the wife, wife. Oh. The question's doomed before it even starts. I mean, they haven't really given me these questions person. in advance. I'm just coming out with this. Maybe okay. She's one other person now. Okay, maybe she's one other person. Okay, who else would I like? Um, I think, you know, to add some real flavour and humour tonight, it would have to be Wayne Garrick. <laughs> in full drag. Yes. Wayne, drag. if you're watching. Oh. <laughs> Only... Would he come in drag for the oh. evening or not? Oh, well, I think Which so. Which one? With, with a llama. <laughs> with, yeah, with a llama. Okay. So we're having, just saying, Jenny Lauriston Clark and Wayne Garrick in drag. No, no, not JLC. <laughs> She's trying to get me into trouble already. We're going to move the question. Next question. Next question. <laughs> Sorry, they're in my notes. Okay. What okay. is the most common mistake you see people making in dressage to music? When, uh, what do you cringe at? Oh, this is things? really, really, really easy. Really easy. So the, the biggest mistake Ashford. that people make, especially if they're not experienced with riding freestyle, is riding their floor plans and not their music. So they go out and they're like, I must get to A before I walk because that's what my floor plan tells me. Ah! And the music's changed 20 yards before. I'm... Yes, I know you do. Yes. So it's knowing music, and I, I, that's my biggest hate, really. It's like, yeah, it's not, we can make, we can put music to your floor plan, and that's wonderful, but when it actually comes down to it, you've got to go and ride it, because it's dressage to music, not music to dressage. Can I answer that? Uh, Kelly wants to answer it. What do you want? Okay. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on. Your wine. Yeah. I'm going to answer that from a music choosing perspective as well. When you do your floor plan, Think of it from a music perspective as well. So to have tons of transitions in your training is wonderful and advantageous, but actually have tons of transitions in your floor plan can actually interrupt the flow of the music. That's terrible. Yeah, don't have too many. Yeah, it's, it's a really good point. So we've got two, two pet hates there. Next question. Yes. Okay, <laughs> tell us something we don't know about you. Probably best if you go with something that Kelly already knows, Tony. Just saying, just <laughs> since this will be... You'll be wrapping up soon. <laughs> there are so many things you don't know about me, actually, Anna. It's it's quite you know those things on Facebook where it says one point for everything you've done, yeah? And then everyone's putting like two, three, four. I'm like on ninety-nine. <laughs> okay, what's the most risque then, Tony? Tell us there's no point just telling us that that you're good at filling in a Facebook quiz. We want the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> There's no dirt in my life. It's all totally innocent. I'm just one of those people who go, you know what? If it's there to do, I'll do it. So, for example, one thing you don't know about, and one thing that the audience don't know about me is I'm heavily involved with charity, a charity in Nepal, where we help school children and build schools. Um, and I take a tour out there every year of a whole load of people to raise money to help build schools and stuff. And I absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. So. <laughs> Wonderful, but we all know that about you because you put it on Facebook. <laughs> I don't like beans. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly doesn't like baked beans. <laughs> no, 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 come on, come on, we want to properly tell us something. It's like, 
Okay, 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 okay. So here we go, here we go. Kelly is the love of my life, everyone knows. We actually got married last year, finally. We've been together almost nine years. I, I've been married oh, twice before. Yeah, that's oh, better, that's better. And, and your dad? Yes. Is a vicar, was a vicar, retired vicar. <laughs> and he's watching Kelly Jeff, my lovely, lovely dad, yes. There you go. So I, that, just, that was I, I just like wedding cake. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so that is that's all your questions for me. That's it. Yeah. Well, we can oh, go. We can keep no, going. I think I got off lightly. I've got a couple of written questions for you guys, which came in, which we're going to sew it up with. Um, we've got Sarah Fisher. Question for Anna and Beth. What are their horses' work routine? I.e., how many days a week do you school and for how long? Good question, Sarah Fisher. How many days a week do you school and for how long? It really depends on the horse, but in general, they school around four days a week and then they do a couple of packs a, a day off and possibly a lunch that that is and the hacking includes lots of hills going in the fields and for the more advanced horses we scale it down even more so when they do their training we do one on a monday we do a, a stretch and then on a tuesday we would do um like the trotting side, so 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 like the, the piap and passage, and then and and then and then and then they'd have a, a, a hack day or a day off, and then you would do the canter work. So you really kind of break it down so that they're not working hard and working the same muscles all the time. Great that, answer. Some, we've become very very more aware of yes. that actually because we have become in the last year not a couple no. um we have become regular gym goers yes and it, which is something that i've done a little bit in the past but we have a great pt called tim yeah who, oh, who might or might not be watching he probably killed himself by now because he doesn't <laughs> understand anything about horse riding he just thinks we're mad and his lovely girlfriend mel mm -hmm. but they they were yeah. watching earlier because yes. they were pleased we were wearing our pajamas yes. <laughs> and actually it's really focused um us on understanding that, you know, we're all guilty of wanting to do lots of repetitions on our horses. Now, I know my educated brain tells me that we know that injury to dressage horses tends to come from chronic um, injuries from repetitions. Um, now, I also know that when I'm doing something in the gym myself, my 10th squat is a lot more difficult than my third squat. And it's actually really focused my mind with the horses to not endlessly repeat. My educated mind knows not to do that anyway. My perfectionist dressage rider in me wants to make repetitions. But I have to say, going to his gym has really, you know, more regularly and taking that side of things much more seriously this year, or last year rather. The, at the moment, we can't go to the gym, so okay. Um, but um, but that's, that has really focused us on that, as well as the recent research by, you know, great people like Dr. David Marlin. He does a fantastic webinar um, on his website. It's £8 a month, guys. Honestly, if you want to look after your horse well and really be up to date, go on David Marlin. It's great entertainment, not, not as quite as good as Tony, obviously, but, you know, <laughs> getting there. Um, and, um, and he's full of the latest sort of sports science, and, and that, that has been a yeah real thing. Yes, yeah, a real big thing. Yeah. Plug him as my PhD supervisor. Oh yes, also yeah, David Marlin is um, Kelly's PhD supervisor because Kelly's doing her PhD. Oh. So that was a really oh. good little link that we didn't know about then. Oh, that's right. David. Hello, David. If you're watching, if you're not, you soon will be watching this because Kelly will send it to you. And we've got one more question finally before we say goodbye. It's from Claire Watts. And it's apt. Relaxation techniques, lady, for horse and riders. Relaxation techniques. What do you recommend, apart from, obviously, this amazing... Took that bottle? This amazing <laughs> bubbly from our friend. This is, a, you know, Cabello Oscuro. Uh, get this. It's amazing. Great relaxation. Totally relaxed. It's totally, I'm actually, like... that's the totally opposite of what you've said about the training and the fitness. But, uh, yes. Yeah. Put that there. <laughs> I think a really good way, if you don't turn to drink, to keep, <laughs> to keep yourself relaxed, especially to show, 
though, is to give yourself time and, and write from, from your test, write on a piece of paper, write down your test time, write what time you're going to get on, but break it down even further and, and give your, in that time, you might need to plat, you know, you might need to do your stock, think about your test, but also give yourself, you know, time just, just to not rush and think about kind of what you're doing. But also if you get stressed about just sitting and thinking about your, your test, kind of think about what you're going to do in, in, in that time as well. You know, you could read a book, listen to music. So, so re, yeah, give be yourself prepared, time. Be prepared. Yeah, be prepared. I, how I do it, and I think I, it would be fair to say I've been veteran of some reasonably pressured situations riding <laughs> on teams and things like that. It's, I think of every, um, everything I do, I see as part of a process. So rather than thinking, oh my God, I've got a show, I've got to ride at Arkan, or uh, if I mess up, we won't qualify for the Olympics <laughs> um, for Great Britain on, on one occasion. Um, I, I just think, this is how I want to ride this test. And I go through it in my mind, and I'm not really very good at visualisation. A lot of people say it's about visualisation. I'm, I'm not really good at visualisation. I, I, I would like to be better at it because everyone who I respect tells me it's a really good thing. But what I do is I think of a test as an interesting process where I'm going to try things out with my horse. So I always have my plan of how I intend to ride that test. Now, obviously, we all know things can happen, for example, in a Grand Prix at Kiso when the horse was afraid of the, you know, the, the inflatable toy or whatever it was. OK, you know, that, that can happen. But in principle, I, have a, I always have a plan of how I'm going to ride my test. And if I ride my plan, I'm always happy because I feel that I controlled the execution. Now, sometimes, of course, like everybody, I look back and I think, gosh, that was a great plan. Well done, Anna. But most of the time, you look back at it and you think, how can I refine that? And you just go through a process of refining each thing and you keep it quite like, calm and logical and methodical. And that has always been, I think, my go-to in how to, um, how to just calmly not turn into a total weirdo to my horse, not turn into like a clothes peg because I'm freaking out. And the horse, you, you know, suddenly thinks, why have you completely lost it? You know, so, so that's how I have, have always have done it. Is I always have a plan. I think you're just like a complete ninja at a show. I don't know if you ever I feel think Jeff, but I still have I still have my plan. So my plan is I, I like to plat the horse on my own mm -hmm. because because I can clear my head and, and whilst I'm platting, give myself time whilst I'm platting, but also think about my test as I'm platting. Because let's face it, when you go down that centre line, you have to remember where you're going and ride. So, so it's, I think it's really good to, to remember your test and, and not just be sat down thinking about it. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important to be doing something and take think, the stress, and I, and take the stress out of stress, Arj. <laughs> but also remember, and I think this is hugely important. It always makes me a bit sad. Like when I see on social media and things, people getting really like upset about dressage, which is nearly always to do with what other people think of them. And it is that this is your fun. Mm -hmm. This is meant to be fun. We have to have fun when we do this. And I, I don't mean to be patronizing. I, I include myself entirely in this. We need to enjoy it. You know, and, and and see it as a fun process that we yes. are that we are doing. You know, that was our four-year-old jumping out of the arena. I mean, we didn't all go and cry and worry about what everyone thought about us. There's another we day. were roaring with laughter. I thought Vicky rode that horse brilliantly, absolutely brilliantly. She gave it such confidence. And you know, just take each day as it comes and enjoy it. Enjoy your horse. We are here for a good time, not a long time. So, that, and I think that's a really important thing to, to remember when we're doing our dressage. This so, is not life itself. This so is finally, riding horses. In I, I just want to say to everybody that, of course, we're in this in the UK. We're in this. Um, Oh, this is my cat here, Mrs. Bigglesworth, by the way. She's rather beautiful. We're in this uh, very strange situation of lockdown three. We literally, <clears throat> we, we can't do much. We're really, um, 
we're really stuck at home um, and it's tough for people at the moment. But just remember, <clears throat> this isn't going to last forever. We can get back out there. We can compete. And so there is plenty going on. There's plenty of people to talk to. There's online lessons. Um, Kelly does online lessons with Anna uh, and she uses Bluetooth headphones with a, with a camera on the side. There's so much we can be doing. It's not time to get negative and down and depressed. This is why we're doing this Friday night as well. For our dressage community, it's just keep engaged, keep a smile on your face, ask questions, get in touch with people and do the very best you can while we're in this very odd situation. Because we're, we're all in it together, right? We are, we're, together. We are in it together. Yes. And, you know, we are a community. We're only a small community, the dressage community, but we're really in it together, yes. you know. And that is why we are here. Instead of being our fancy dressage riding selves, we're, we're the same as everyone else. We're on a Friday night, here in our pyjamas, <laughs> like I reckon a lot of you are. And with our glass of wine and our dog, we don't know how much longer we're going to be here in our pyjamas for, but we can all be here for each other. Yes. And, and I think if we can use social media for, for the positive, you know, let's do that. Let's all communicate with each other and build a community because this is really fun. What, what Tony's doing, Paul and Bobby are going to be brilliant. Steph Proxford is going to be fantastic. fantastic. You know, let's all stick together, get together on a Friday night and and get, well, have a laugh on a Friday. Yeah. Yes. We didn't come here as two fancy dress art riders to tell you all what to do with your horses. We're just two people here in our PJs with our dog. Yeah. <laughs> and, and on and that. I think that's a, a yeah. good way to, you know, say good evening to uh, Yeah, absolutely. On that fantastic note, thank you so much, everyone. I should say like Jeremy Clarkson, on that bombshell. <laughs> <laughs> but on that fantastic note, thank you all of you for coming to join us tonight. It's meant a lot, and we've really enjoyed it too. I hope you have. Next week, of course, we've got Bobby and Paul Haler coming to join us. And the following week, we've got Steph Croxon with her amazing journey through her dressage career. And hopefully, we'll have a whole Nagmad. load more. Nagmad. Nah, lined up for you. If you want to get some good gear as well, we've got a friend of ours who runs a company called Nag Mad Equestrian and they're selling stuff. So if you're looking to buy some quality new or secondhand stuff, she runs auctions all the time. That's Nag Mad Equestrian. Um, fantastic. That's Maria, a good friend of ours who works ever so hard. Let's say good night to Beth and Anna. Good night. And good night to Mrs. Equidance, who's got a dog on her lap, so can't come over and say good night. Good night, good night for us. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time, hopefully. Good night.